Thank you, my lord. I mean, that's it. Uh, morning, Brigadier. Good morning, good morning, Mr. Rexedit. Now, Brigadier, when we adjourned on Friday, one of the things that I requested was for us to go back and look at the witnesses according to their contemporaneous statements that were made on the 27th of October 2014 to have a regard as to which witnesses referred to the firearm that a .38 special revolver and which one simply referred to it as a firearm or as a gun. Did you have an opportunity to do that exercise? Yes, yes, I, I did, my lord, um, and, and I'll get to it, but just uh, quickly, my lord, then the issue of um, uh, the statement by Kenneth Stein that relates to the communication with accused three. What I recall, I said, I said there was a briefing given to me by Kenneth Stein where he says there is a link between Miss Kelly Kumalo and the accused three. And I can confirm that that statement is there because I had an opportunity to check. So as to how we get it to Mr. Nisi, I will liaise like as advocate by Louis is saying, um, you know, when that proper channel is there. So I will assist in that regard when we can uh, speak open about it. But, it's, but I, I had I had to go and look myself, you know, to check it's, if yeah, it's yeah, it is It is there, it is where? It is in the docket. In the yes. docket. Yeah, okay, yeah. Fine. So, 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 and I'll assist with, with, you know, in making sure that Mr. Nisi gets it. All right. Okay, fine. Yes. So, yes, my lord. Now, coming back to the question by um, Mr. Ramsey Pere, my lord. Yes, the only statements that I recall, and, and I'm suspect to guidance by Mr. Longwen, and I was specific in terms of the paragraph that he, where this is contained, where he refers to the revolver or 38. Um, that's a statement he made back in 2014, my lord. Um, Mr. Matala also. Um, but I've also noted, my lord, in the interview um, that we conducted by um, Mrs. Warren Officer Stenkamp, um, it is clear also there that when she, when he was, when she was interacting with Ms. Kelly Kumalo, the issue of a revolver became apparent. In fact, if if you look at her interview notes, they seem to suggest that everyone may be giving that impression. So that's that's basically how I can I can I can answer the question, my lady. Now, perhaps for completeness sake, let's go at Seria team with respect to Longwood Pala. The statement that he deposed on the 27th of October 2014 will be A9 according to your docket. And in that A9, he describes, like you correctly say, that the firearm that he observed was a 0.88 special or a 3.8 special because there's also another dot in between. So that is correct. And then Tumelo Madala deposed to A10 on the very same date as long way on the 27th of October 2014 and then he described the firearm as well as a 0.38 special that is correct my lord and then he also to Melo Madala later on deposed to A110 in which he said the following that I said to the person that was taking the statement from me that the firearm I observed had a will in the middle. I did not specifically say it's a point thirty eight special. That's what's contained in A110. Correct, my lord. However, despite that attempt of the Melo Madala to distance himself from A9 I and mean in A10 by saying that I did not say this is point three eight special, A10 speaks for itself. That's what he describes in A10. The supplementary comes much, much later. That, that is correct, my lord, but it is a fact that Tumelo Majala is not licensed because I profiled him, my lord, to possess, he doesn't have a, a license to possess firearms. So I do know that when this issue was taken up with him, when I was involved, um, the assertion from him was that he's not put up with firearms and, and, and um, he will not be able to distinguish whether it's a revolver or is this type of firearm. All I can say in that regard, my lord, is that he is not qualified in terms of the papers. He does not have a license to possess a firearm, so he, he lacks with greatest respect the experience in my view my lord yes ma but in a1 110 not to deliver this point he, he should have gone further and say what you are saying to say i am not an expert in firearms i am not licensed therefore when i was saying point 38 special or a, a revolver 
our SMINI generically to a firearm? Would you not say that? Yes, my lord, but, but Mr. Magala, I think you made about three or four statements. So one, we'll have to check all the statements, um, you know, uh, with a microscopic view, microscopic view to ensure that it did not cover it perhaps in the other statements. Uh, because in the one that Mr. Ramsipil is referring to, yes, indeed, he didn't say that. But there are other statements that he made subsequent to this one, my lord. <laughs> As the court please, my lord, we're just trying to find the relevant portion of... Uh, Mr. Magala's evidence. He did testify that you know he doesn't have um, knowledge of firearms, and without prescribing to my learned friend, I think it's perhaps better to relate what is in the statement with the evidence because the statement was made some time ago. The witnesses since come testified and clarified all these aspects. It, it would be of no consequence, my lord, to. Um, happen the statement with respect that was made some time ago when the witness has already testified as a the, the question my lord that, that we're referring to is the evidence given by mr jimila madala on the 10th of august 2023 at page four um, during cross-examination by mr numalo at line 12 Mr. Numalo says, so the description of the firearm that you gave in that paragraph, it is stated that it was a .38 special. Is that the description that you gave to the police? Then Mr. Mandela answers, I do not know what a .38 special is. All I know is that the description that I gave was a description in as far as the firearm that had, that had a wheel on it. That is the description I gave to the police and as far as the uh, 0.38 special or um, 3.8 special is concerned, I did not know firearm. I did not say that it was a 0.38 special. My Lord, that's a, a, a crisp response. There's no contestation between me and the state on that. I even put it to the witness on Friday that in his uh, defense, I stated to him that Tumelo Madala said the description that he gave was a firearm with a wheel. I told this witness that on Friday. But I'm just comparing what's written in the statement, what he testified about. So there's no contestation between us. Mm. Now, like you've testified that certain witnesses, especially the ones that have come and testified, that way in the house, typically, Zandile Kumar as well said, and I remember vividly, I was crossing, cross examining her. She said, I'm not an expert in firearms, I won't be able to describe it. Similarly, Tokozis uh, Twala could not describe the firearm. Mm. And the point that I'm coming to, Longwe Twala has yet to testify in this matter. Mm. And his description, you will agree with me that it's a point very special and it still stands according to his statements. Yes, according to the statement, my lord, he still stands. However, he is also in the same boat with Tumelo Magala and so are the other people who were in the house. None of them possess the license um, for the firearm. So there are no expertise in terms of the firearm, I'm saying legally, in terms of in terms of the profiling. What is factually correct, my lord, and that I can rely on is that the experts, this is now the ballistic expert, at the crime scene, they found the projectile that relates to the 9mm. And that is why in my statements, when I refer to a revolver, I said purporting to be a revolver in relation to what was contained in the statements, not what was the factual finding, because I was laying the basis of what is contained in the, in, in the docket. But yes, that still stands, um, as Mr. Ramsipile says, but there, there are no expertise there, with greatest respect to him as well. Okay. Then, A12, we are still on the witnesses that were in the house. A12 is a statement of Gletnes Kumalo or Makumalo. She also did not give a specific description of the firearm. Correct. And A13 is a statement of Ms. Zandide Kumalo. She too did not give a specific description of the firearm. I yes, she didn't give it. Both A12 and A18, my lord, did not give a description of a specific firearm, specific firearm, in other words, in terms of the, the type or the make. But they do say uh, the first intruder was carrying a firearm. That's, that's the essence of it. And finally, A26 is the statement of Mutokozi Sitwala. And also he too did not 
describe the firearm in specific terms? Yes, yes indeed. Except to say um, the intruder had a firearm, but not describing it. So the presence of the firearm becomes prevalent in my these statements. Now the second aspect that I packed was the issue that I said I don't want to put a wrong proposition to you regarding where the so-called runaway phone lost its signal. Remember that issue? I do remember my lot. Now uh, you you said in your 8225 the statement that we were busy with on Friday that the signal was lost at the Fosuras hostel. And my follow-up question was, what do you mean by the Fosuras hostel? Because my assumption is that there are several hostels in Fosuras. Th that's correct, my lord. But I seem to recall my response being in this context that it lost the signal because it's very specific, and I testify about it in my evidence in chief on the Muleleke Tower. That's the last tower that pick up the cell phone signal. And I do recall, my lord, that I said, in my interaction with the expert, can it stay? says, that tower, because we had to do a site visit, in terms of the distance, can cover the Basutuni hostel, which was now a place where um, allegations are saying that is where the planning was done, and that's where the perpetrators met after the incident. So that's, that's, that's how I recall that there that question. Now, in, in, just for clarification of that question, and that answer that you've just given now, in the evidence in chief, when she was led by my learned colleague, Advocate Sibanda, Ms. Pinky Vitalingham testified as follows regarding that aspect whether Moneleki uh, Tower does have a Basuto hostel. And she, uh, that she replied that Basuto hostel could be serviced by the following uh, four towers, which are Postura's Tower, Postura Square Tower, Phoenix Tower and Bupang Koto Tower. And Muleriki Tower was not one of the towers that she mentioned that the coverage extends to. My Lord, like I said, I do not have expertise. All, all I was relying on is that the expert is informing me that in terms of where that tower was situated and the distance to the hostel, it is possible that it will cover, it will cover it. That's the explanation I've got. What was not given to me, it wasn't to say on that specific day, these other towers were not active or this tower was the only one that was active. Uh, uh, that information was not given to me because I do know um, that it depends as to which tower is, 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 is involved. But, but like I said, my Lord, maybe it's the area that one should not venture into because I'm not an expert in those areas. And in our discussion, my Lord, the Arab towers were not uh, part of our discussion with Kenneth Stain. It was simply the focus of the last tower where the phone went off. It was in relation just to that. These other towers um, and the discussion as to whether there are other towers that covers the Vasutino you know, hostel or etc. We, we didn't venture into that discussion, my Lord. So that's something that was not discussed between us. Sorry, uh, who, who is this expert? That is Kenneth Stain. Yeah, because Mr. Ramsey is referring to Pinky. Evidence is that am I correctly? Yes, uh, and you are talking of a different expect. Yes, that's kind of stain, my lord. My lord, this is stain. You are saying pinky. Yes, but my lord, yeah, fine. My understanding is that both experts <coughs> did separate duties. Uh, I don't know. did the analysis and downloads of the cell phones and made the so called linkages, the spider webs, and this Italian game spoke about the movement of the cell phones, the calls made, the calls received, text SMSs, and the towers that, that were pinged during the making of these transactions. Now, my Lord, the other thing that I want to come to is not a question per se to the Brigadier, but it's a question that was raised by the court regarding whether Moleleki Tower is not south of Boston. I, I had a look, my Lord, unfortunately, the the directions are given in coordinates of longitude and latitude, longitude, and it's only numbers. Unfortunately, I'm also not an expert in that regard, but as, cross, as a cross-examiner, I'm also interested to know, relative to uh, the hostel where Munelegi Tower is directional. So I'm really, uh, perhaps uh, Ms. Vettelingham can come and just ventilate that aspect for us uh, at the later stage. Man. No, but what's critical also for this court is was there a phone, cell phone, which was at some stage situated in the house allegedly where in two intruders got in and got out according to the evidence? Mm. 
Zandile, Zandile says uh, somebody was elbowed. The mother was punched. And then the cell phone was taken. Now, was it inside the house? Because that's critical for this court also. Inside the house. What way it, it, it landed? Fine. It, it, it is of absolute uh, uh, importance, my lord. And I'll tell them. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The court what, what? I say in addition. Yes, yes. I'll tell the court. Now you can argue that. We'll argue that. But uh, <laughs> it's very vital, my lord, that you, I do argue yeah, fine. Now, Brigadier, let's return then to A225 because I was taking you through your statement, A225, in support of the application for the J50 warrant of arrest in terms of Section 43 for Ms. Nontanta Kedikumalo. Correct, my lord. And on Friday, when we stopped, uh, we were at the question of the transparent, transparent plastic bag with loads of money in it wherein I asked you, did you ascertain the source of that photo from the trio of people that you say, this is a common denominator in their downloads? Remember that? I do recall my lot. And the point really that I was making is this. Here is a picture common to three people that are unknown to each other. That required examination, people being asked, where does it come from? Who's the source of this picture? Explain this money in this bag. And that was never done. That's the essence of what I was putting on Friday. Yeah, so my lord, my recollection on Friday, we were dealing with the issue with the same plastic bag in relation to accused number three. That's yes. why it was specific because we had, we had gone past Miss Kelly Kumalo and, 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 and Longway. So it was centered around accused three as to whether on the day, and that's what I recall, that on the day when we went to measure or when it was measured, what was this question uh, put forward? I know Mr. Advocate Nisi was interested in that regard as to whether he was asked, this is now Advocate Nisi's client, about the bag or not. Um, that's where we were. And, and I can answer it in this way, my lord. Let me just deal with it now. So the sequence of events followed like this because they're, they're important in terms of the answer that I will give, my lord. On the 16th of June, 2020, accused number two gets arrested for the Vanagoma case. Then on the 19th of June, he makes a statement, the first confession that he makes to Lieutenant Colonel Rappard. And for the first time on the 16th of June, the name of accused three, I'll just focus on accused three, comes up for the first time. What is prudent to note, my lord, is that prior to these two dates, we did not have the downloadings of accused three because he was not on site. The people that were analyzed was accused uh, one and two, and then when we got to two, then accused three's name comes up on the 19th and the 24th. So then the analysis starts in terms of identifying as to who is this Carlos, Carlos or Carlos Utelese that has been referred to. And then it leads us now to accused number three. This is where my lord, we then established that he was incarcerated for the Cleveland case. This is now the position of a firearm under Cleveland case 96 of 2, 2015. And that is where the firearm uh, involved um, in this matter or that was used in this matter is alleged that was found in his possession and the cell phones that were taken back in 2015. So these events kicks in around that period of late June 2020. Then on the 30th, my lord, specifically, this is now six days after Mrs. Grenier took the confession, 30th of June 2020. That's when accused number three was interviewed by me and measured by Kenan Mangana. So it's six days after the last confession and it is before the downloadings analysis picked up the see-through bag from his phone and the report given back to me. The, the first statement, my lord, that I recall um, receiving from the downloader where, where this bag and other contents, including the firearms and the photos that we dealt with, my lord, um, my recollection is that it came to my attention on the 17th, 7th, 17th of August um, 2020. That was after we interviewed the, 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 the accused number three in prison, and that's the, it was after he was measured. And then after the downloads were provided to us, my lord, that, those downloads were forwarded to them to Kenneth State, who is an analyst. He is the one then who was able, who was able to pick up this common denominator, <coughs> but this is after the interview. And my lord, as to why we, could, we will not have gone back, because the question may arise as to why then couldn't you go back 
the answer lies on the response and, and that's why i was saying when we interview accused three there are certain assertions that he went to and, and in fairness to him i even said to mr ramsey do you do you want me to go there because i know the consequences of going there there are certain assertions he made in terms of how we must engage moving forward in the warning statement and because of that i could not go back to him um, it's there in the warning statement my Lord. that is the essence of the answer my Lord. now we we are still on a 225 you go on to say there is also communication records between her and her sister that shows that as early as 2013 she wanted to get rid of the deceased as she could it clearly on the whatsapp messages it is abundantly clear that she hated him and she wanted to get rid of him she further states that she regrets no succeeding to get rid of him taking into account all, all these facts an inference can be drawn that she meant killing him i i do recall that my lord now i'm going to <coughs> refer you to exhibit 01 which is the statement of colonel stain and he testified about these documents and the whatsapp messages that you are referring to are also extracted and form part of uh, 01 exhibit 01 so if i may respectfully refer you to page uh, 6 of 01 if you put it uh, 01 that is a statement of who uh, what, what will be the index number perhaps that will assist me with that okay uh, there's no a number on on here so i can't give you the index number um i, I will who's can it uh, it's, it's, it's one of kennel stains uh, uh affidavits he made oh one and oh two oh two deals with the communication between lower twala and kevin and, and zanile kumar mainly but oh one deals with communication and linkages with kevin kumano and other targets my lord i have to look for it because can they made various statements so <clears throat> and they are not small statements so one will have to i'll try and look for it maybe while we to proceed to yes, I, I, I want us to go through that because that's an aspect that i'm going to i see my learned colleague handed you uh, pages i know i was not no. So. no 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 he handed me the pages of two to five my statement okay. right. yes if maybe for the sake of gravity i'll my learned colleague Are you in possession of one, especially the part that has got the extract of text messages between Mrs. Zandile Kumano and Kevin Kumano? I, I do have um, extracts, my lot, although they are not marked zero uh, 01, but I suppose it refers, if, I, I do have something similar. Yes, if you look at the bottom of the document, it will have six page kind of statement of, of, of Kennel stay with cell number and then to yes. page six and yes. then on Yes, yes, so that's what I have. That's what I have. Page six. Yes. And at the title at the top it will say, I mean in the middle where the message is started, boxes there. It will say SMS received by Zandikumalo, Nokia and eight dash zero zero in brackets RM dash five nine six close bracket Zandikumalo and it's XRY sent by Kelly Kumalo 082270 so I think there's extra numbers that you can see that. Yes, I can see this. Exactly. So uh, if we go to the text message box, the actual text message that was screen grab is in the box. You cannot see it, but it is also typed out. And it will have telephone number, which is 2782-704-4358 and then the text will say uh, Sonzo's, Sonzo's mom is talking to every radio station in Devon telling her how it will tell you how it would be my fault if she dies of heart attack. Can you believe this woman? You see the text message? I do see my note. Now if you take it from there and place it on record the time, the status, the storage, the type, and the folder. Yes, so time. 
I do think so. So, the time, my lord, um, it's, it's the date and time. It's 2013 um, of October the 11th. Time is 09.43.59 seconds a.m. Status, it says it's red. Storage type, device, type incoming, folder, it's inbox. And then let's go to the second message and uh, place it on record. Yes, should I place it? Yes. The second message is from... Two seven eight two seven zero double four three five eight. Text reads as follows, my lord. I regret everything I wish I didn't allow Senzo into my life. Look at all the mess it has um, gotten us into. It's all his lies now affecting all of us. Uh, then, well, no, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Then the time and date, my lord, is 2013, October the 11th, and time is 09, 46, 44 seconds a.m. Status, it says it's red. Um, storage, is a, it says device. Type, it says incoming, and the folder is inbox. Let's go to the next, uh, third message on page 7 at the top. That message says telephone from 27827044. Five, eight. The text reads as follows, my lord. No, CC. It makes matters worse for me because I am just, I am just seen a person who is wrecking. I'm just seen a person who is wrecking Senzo's family. Um, time is time and date, my lord. Is it's 2013 October 11. Time is 09:50:02 seconds a.m. Status red storage device type incoming and the folder inbox then the i suppose yes, i should proceed yes. okay. the next one my lord says telephone from two seven eight two seven zero double four three five eight text no it reads as follows the text my lord no it won't it will just mean that i went through all this for nothing but i think he is going to he is he is gonna leave because he is shit scared of his mother i wish i was not pregnant i was going to let him go time and date my lord is 2013 october the 11th and the time it's 09:53, 31 seconds a.m the status says red and the storage device type incoming the folder it's inbox <coughs> my lord my apologies for um pronouncing this vulgar way but that's that's how it's written so i i don't know how to um uh, so my apologies the next message my lord says telephone from two seven eight two seven zero double four three five eight it says text the text i wish god would tell me why um time the date is 2013 october the 11th Time is 09.58.31 seconds a.m. Status, red, storage, device, type, incoming. The next one on page 8, my lord, um, says telephone from 27827044358. Text, Senzo is not strong enough for all of this, though. I feel like standing, I feel like standing alone. Time is 2013, sorry, date is 2013, October the 11th, and time is 10.06.44 a.m. Status says red, my lot. Storage device, type incoming, folder, inbox. The next message, my lot says telephone from 27827044358. The text reads as follows. He's panicking, remember? He's panicking, remember? This is his first big and bad publicity. Publicity. So he's worried about his entire family. Time and date. The date reads as follows: 2013, October the 11th. Time: 10, 12, 15 seconds a.m. Status: red. Storage device. Type: incoming. Folder: inbox. <coughs> then on page nine, my lord. Um, the telephone from 27. 827044358 the text reads as follows what's worse is that his family is not schooled about how to deal 
with the media but Papa Nje, especially his mother um, who wants to be famous um, at my expense uh, my lord uh, it's, it's difficult yeah, but, but anyway that's what it says what's difficult? I'm saying the things that are said they, they, um, they're insulting but be that as it may the time, date and time my lord it's 2013 October 11 time is 20 is 10 14 06 seconds a.m status red storage device type incoming and folder inbox the next one my lord says telephone from 2782 7044358 the text reads as follows i don't know what he wants to do he can go if he wants to um the date and the date my lord is 2013 October 11, time 10 14 34 seconds a.m. Status red, storage device, type incoming, and the folder it's inbox my lord. Then the next one, my lord says telephone from 2782704358. The text reads as follows I've given him a choice to leave and told him I never want him to choose between me and his family. The date is 2013, October the 11th, time 10, 18, 10 seconds a.m. Status red, storage device, type incoming, and the folder it's inbox, my lord. The next one at the bottom of the page, which will go to page 10, my lord, starts with telephone from 2782704358, and the text reads as follows. Um, LOL. Um, I just want his. I just want this whole. Um, um, I. Uh, um, it's an insulting word, my lord. I, I don't. Should I read it? What is it, my lord? I, 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 I. Who is insulting who? Um, she's sending a message um, to 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 Zandi, but it's. Um, I'll read it as it says. No, but I want to know who's insulting who because you're saying the messages come from this specific number which ends with 358. Mm -hmm. So 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 the number 358 is the number of Miss Kelly Kumar. Yes, and she's talking to the sister. Oh, the so sister. the person that has been discussed is the deceased, but it's the discussions between the two sisters. Is that so? Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. Um, now, you don't have to read it because at the time, Senzo was still alive. Yes, he was alive. Yeah, fine. This time. No, I'm not done. Okay. So, so the date of this message, my Lord, says 20, 13, December 31. At the time, it's 11, 15, 51 seconds a.m. The status is red. Um, storage device type incoming and the folder, it's inbox, my Lord. The next one, my Lord, says telephone from 2782704358. The text reads as follows, I, I'm, I'm emotionally drained, I, I sometimes feel that sense of brought a dark cloud in my life and I can almost hate myself for not succeeding in getting rid of him uh, via SMS and the SMS will not go. I feel like God is deliberately sabotaging me by keeping this man in my life. The, the, the date, my lot of this test was 2013, December the 31st, and time it's 11, 24, 31 seconds a.m. Status, red, storage, it's a device, and the type, it was an incoming message, um, the folder inbox. And then the next one, my lord, says telephone from 27827044358. The text reads as follows. Oh yeah, laughing. I can't wait for the day he is no longer in my heart. The time was 2013. Sorry, the date, my lord. 2013, December the 31st. The time was 11.31.01 seconds a.m. Status red, storage was the device. The type it was an incoming uh, message and the uh, and folder is inbox, my lord. The next message, the next readings, my lord, on page 11, it reads as follows, telephone from 27827044358. The text reads as follows, all I can do is hope and pray that each day I am getting closer to my day of being free from him.
Um, the time, the date is 2013, December the 31st. The time is 11.41, 16 seconds a.m. Status, red storage device, type incoming, and the folder is inbox my note. Um, the, the next thing is that, uh, so, the readings my notes engine, because Kenneth engine extracted, it plays some other Diagrams, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. So I was just interested in the messages and the reason I was interested in the messages is because you say in A225, taking into account all these facts, an inference can be drawn that she meant killing him and that inference you drew from these 12, 13 messages that we have read. Yes, some of them I know. That yes. I think the entire context, um, the entire downloading might be more than this. I think can you stay in extracted some of it, yes. but but yes, the, this covers the inference that I do I know that that's what that's what she meant. And the last sentence on A two two five, just before the commissioning part on paragraph five, it says I hereby apply for, for the warrant of arrest for Donald Kelly Kumano on charges of conspiracy to commit murder and murder. You see that? I do see that, my lord. And in, in in relation to that, you then completed the J50 form. Is that correct? Yes, I did, my lord. And that J50 is uh, in your uh, uh, index. It will be A226. Uh, the statement is A225. The J50 uh, form will be. A226. Yes, yes, I recall the index is correct, my lord. And just in passing, uh, I, I, I don't want to, to, to belabor this point. You say then you did not execute, you went to this length to make this statement to complete the J50, but you did not execute or take the J50 plus the affidavit to the magistrate because this was prosecutorial uh, driven uh, investigation. Uh, what then happened? Because you were explaining something along those lines on Friday. No, no, no. Uh, it's yeah. So, so the, the correct context, my brother said, it was my view that this is what we have. Mm -hmm. I, I think maybe if I can, without sort of, sort of, I can put it in the correct context. I said prior to the accused being indicted by the DPP, it was my initial proposal that based on what we have, she must be charged together with these five accused. Mm -hmm. But it was there on our interaction that um, from the prosecution side there's further investigation that it must be done. That led me to this statement 225 that Mr. Ramsey is going through now, my lord, where I then came to say, this is the further evidence that we have now collected, the cell phones and so forth. Um, but as I said, it was a procedural driven investigations. It was uh, provided what I have, the application, and uh, through the discussion, um, I was advised to hang on to it at that stage, my lord. So, so in essence, my lord, the decision, um, my decision as a police officer is to investigate and do what exactly I did. You investigate, you compile your statement, you apply the J50. The process of um, the J50 in terms of authorization, then obviously the NPA and the judiciary then kicks in. So you simply make an application. If there's no blessings, then it, it, that's how it is. I can't take it further than that. Now, before I proceed on to the, the, the next aspect, that has got to do with the reasons now where you stated that after carefully perusing and studying the docket, you then came to a realization that there were indeed intruders in the house, uh, and, and then you gave certain grounds and reasons in your evidence in chief, and you stated that those were your personal reasons, correct? Yes, guided by what was contained in the docket, my lord. But just to close this chapter of the warrant, my lord, to close it in the right context, um, because I want it to be, uh, to be understood in that context, it wasn't to say when there was no blessing from the NPA, there was a rejection. It was a question of saying, perhaps get some more, perhaps the issues of timing. It was a strategic decision that was taken during our interaction. So, so, but the position was not to say the NPA is against discussions that occurred between us and I can't um, discuss them in this court, my lord, but um, it wasn't a, a refusal to say she should not be charged he at some stage. Said. Yes. Yes. Sorry, Mr. Ramsey, I just wanted to say that. Now, just on an aspect that I touched on last week regarding 375, recall I asked you who is the A1 in, 
in 375 and stated that it was one Professor Makubo. I, I, my response, my lord, my lord, was to say, according to the system, yes. one Professor Makubo is the component. That's 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 what I said. My lord. <coughs> now, as you correctly stated, that you had access and by access you qualified it that uh, one of the times was when disclosure was required to be made for the defense team here in of 375 and indeed uh, i do have the a1 statement of warrant officer makubo uh, in first known as 375 of 01 2019 uh, it was commissioned on the 20, 22nd of january 2019 and the commissioner is uh, a Joyce Usisiwe Butelezi. Uh, it's a, a two-page statement. Um, I'm not briefly for the court. If I can just read the A1 to, 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 to the brigadier. Do you have a copy, brigadier? I, I, I don't. I don't have it now, my lord. Uh, yes, I appreciate it. Perhaps you can just. I've got a copy with me, but it's not marked. Thank you, my lord. Yes, I now have one. Uh, it reads on top, first known as CAS 375 of 01 2019, uh, says, either undersigned warrant officer Michel Makubo do hereby state under oath as follows that in paragraph one, I employed as a detective warrant officer by the South African Police Services attached to 165. Mayor Street, Jimmy State, DPCI, Hunting Province. I'm currently one of the four investigating officers in this matter and have 24 years' experience in this field. He gives me his contact details that we won't reveal in this court. Paragraph 2. Usually, uh, when one wants to prove the entirety of the statement, we want it to be proven first. Um, through the person who made it, my lord, but it, it would appear that my learned friend wants to place the entire statement on record um, without having followed that, that, that process. Um, Brigadier Gininda, my lord, is not um, the person to commission the statement um, or cannot vouch to the um, correctness thereof, but the entirety of the statement is put to him. We submit, my lord, with the greatest of respect that that will not be uh, proper. There's nothing wrong in perhaps crossing, you know, putting certain portions of the statement to him for comment, but to try and put the statement in total record we submit, it's not proper. Yes, my lord, let me do this. Uh, Mr. Mkomezula has indicated that this witness will be called later. Perhaps let me leave the statement uh, from the brigadier so that when he comes, this can be put first on record then. Ah, but you shall have cross-examined, that's the point. So, oh. you shall have cross-examined. That's okay, man. Uh, Are you with me? Yes. That's, you can't that's wait yes. or rely on another counsel. Yeah. So you must decide. It's different if you want to use this statement to say to this court, you are going to call Mr. Makubo, Warrant Officer Makubo, as a witness. Then that's different. Then it can be provisionally admitted under those circumstances. Now, I, but, but if you don't make that, now that's not my intention. Mr. Those are not my staff. But then it's correct. It's correct. That it's just something that is correct to us here because it's the one that has indicated that mm. is going to come in. Uh, if I can have it back, uh, because you're not making it. Thank you. Now, let's go to uh, Brigadier to uh, some of the reasons why you say there were intruders. And by asking you this, let me be upfront from the beginning. I'm asking as a cross examiner for clarification purposes. My instructions are very clear from accused number two that he was not in the house, he was not involved in the commission of the offense. By therefore asking you about these reasons, I'm asking you as a cross examiner. It does not come from a standard that he knows something about what transpired in that house. Understood, my lord. Now, one of the reasons that you mentioned, and I'm going to 
request you because I don't want to misquote you. Where I misquote you, put the correct context on some of the reasons that you gave that, that they misquote you or misapprehend you on. Right? Right, I must be Now, the first one you say is according to the statements of the witnesses, uh, a robbery of the cell phone belonging to Kelly Kumalo was taken by the robbers. Do you recall that? Yes, I'm. Um uh, well, I don't remember the exact context, um, that I, how I put it, my lord, but, but the essence of that submission is that there were allegations that cell phone was taken, um, and I indicated why do I believe that indeed it was taken, my lord. The context was the following. You had stated that after the incident, the phone numbers and the people that were in the house congregated at Phoenix, but the one cell phone that is 2498, that registered at Mulelegi Tower. That is within that context that you stated this. Now, this phone allegedly at Mulelegi, would you have any knowledge who was in possession of that phone at Mulelegi? Um, personal knowledge or based on the docket, my lord, yes. maybe that's... So, well, my lord, what is contained in the docket and is contained in the confession of accused Mr. Ramsipel's uh, client. He says the phone was taken by accused three from him. He says he took the phone from the house and then it was taken from, from him by accused three as they were driving back. That's, that's, that's what is contained in the docket. In the context of the phones, my lord, what I, what I said um, was that in convincing me that indeed they were intruders, one could see that the phone, and I refer to the runaway phone, the phone that disappeared, before this incident took place, was in the same tower with all other folks. So one tower picked them up prior to this incident. They were in the same tower. After the incident happened, when the other phones um, were moving towards the clinics, and I even said, my Lord, the people who were there, um, who were in the house, were accounted for in the clinics in terms of um, in terms of what they were saying, who was there and so forth, including the deceased. But this particular phone, the runaway phone, took a different direction and I indicated my lord that it then ended up at this tower uh, of Mulelik. Yet the, uh, the people who were in the house supported by the phone, I know we even had a discussion as to whether mom's phone was there or not, but I said they were in the clinics. In particular, I was focusing on Longway because it was said Longway is the shooter and I said his phone, for the fact, was picked up in the clinics, supported by the tracker system of his vehicle that places in the mandate. Yes. Now, when you inherited this phone and in this investigation, this aspect of the runaway phone, did you personally interview Kelly Kumalo about it? No, I didn't. As, as I said, my lord, and I put it, my lord, in, in stages, that the first part was the first fact-finding mission. In other words, to draw up an investigation plan, one needed to know whether, in terms of the second allegation, that is prior reading the docket, whether the investigation must be directed to the people who inside the houses, the perpetrators, or indeed to the intruders. So the first phase when I was dealing with this aspect was when we were dissecting the docket to establish whether there is evidence in the docket indicating whether they were intruders or not. So it is at that stage, my lord, and I couldn't interview um, Ms. Kelly Kumalo, anyone. I didn't interview anyone because I didn't want to be contaminated or influenced by those people. I wanted to rely on what is contained factually on the docket. So what I said is based on what I found on the docket, not on what somebody told me, my lord. My lord, I can also just add um, that if there was any evidence um, in the docket suggesting that there were no intruders, I can tell this court without any uncertainty that we were going to pursue that investigation. There is no way I would have taken a different direction when evidence points me, you'll be breaking the law. That's the simple essence of it. Yes. Okay, I'm just looking for one aspect that I want to refer you to regarding the so-called runaway phone. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to that. Uh, okay, I've got it. If I may refer you, Brigadier, to the statement of Nombilo Melangwani Sangwini, uh, who is one of the neighbors that was staying in Zamo section at 13255 uh, Bongani Street in Zamo Street View. Uh, um, yes, it, yes, it will be A94. A94. Of your index. A94. 
Minister and it was commissioned on the 10th of January 2015 by the Commissioner and Angel Mutetwa, who is a captain in the South African Police Services. A94? Yes, Lobilo Sanguini. But, but I, I have an idea, my lord, of what is It's a statement by the traditional doctor. Yes, yes, uh, yes I have an idea. I'll find it, my lord. But I know okay. it's a lady. She's a traditional doctor from, from not far from uh, the Kumano's house. So uh, I'll find it. I've got an idea. Just in relation to the phone, because I'm not going to say it, it's a four part, I mean, four page statement that is typed out. So it's, it's quite lengthy. I don't want to refer you to the whole contents. I'll only refer you to paragraph 14 thereof relating to the runaway phone. Yes, my lord, I'm listening. Which says, before Kelly left, she had told me that the, the criminals got inside the house and pretended as if they wanted her cell phone. But she was surprised because they did not take the phone. They only killed Senzo. She found the phone next to the door after they had left. That's a good place for us. What's your time, you know, once again, we take to, to the same problem. Yeah, we can hear Here's can double, double hearsay evidence. Mm. Are you going to call the lady? Are you going to say it's a traditional doctor? I'm not sure whether she's alive, my daughter. Hello? I'm not even sure whether she is still present. I'll, I'll find out from the brigadier. No, I'm just interested. Are you calling her? That's what I want to know. I'll find out from the brigadier if she's still available. Then I'll tell you the court after the short adjournment. I see. Yes. But there are other statements, but the one that I can think of, um, um, Principal Zongo, because he even identifies them in his, in, in, his, in his statements that this is the person that is referring to um, in terms of the pictures. So identify a picture of Akus 3 and refer him as, I think, the surname Vitelezi. And I can go to his statement. So I'm saying there was no dispute as, as to say the name, even though there's a Vitelezi surname, but the person that is being referred to is Mr. Mnube, who is accused number three. Now, one of the reasons that you also mentioned was the issue of DNA evidence and you read the report in respect of the people that were in the house. You remember that? I do, rem I do remember it, my lord. And that report excluded the house as donors of certain areas that were swapped. Remember? I do remember that, my lord. What about the accused persons before court from accused one to five? Does the NA bring them to the 26th of October 2014? Um, my lord, um... According to the report of... Yes, I'm, I'm, go I'm going there. Yes. I'm, I'm going there. I'm just trying to find the right way, my lord, because when I try to venture into this aspect during the evidence in chief, it was greatly... Um, uh, um, objected by accused number by Mr. Nisi, you know, because I was actually going to accuse three. So I'm trying to find a way as to how should I actually answer the question because my answer will be saying the report, my recollection of the report made by the police, the captain who made the report was an expert, excluded at the end of the day, he says he's excluding some of well all, all of the accused however my lord however because and this is the part that i'm saying when you read the report you must read it in its entire context you can't just select the last portion and ignore the person what he's saying about somewhere about he links some of the accused in terms of what he can read the only difficulty is that he could not find all the markers all the certain markers to make a conclusive finding so i was dealing with it in that context uh, but as i said uh, we, we um it didn't sit well with mr Nisi and i think mr Cholola in terms of my expertise but my reliance really was what is contained in the report so i'm not sure whether you want me to take it further than this mr. And, and i was saying this my lord in the sense that for example when you are looking at the investigation if, for example, um, we know even the fingerprints, you need to get a certain um, regions of it, you know, to get to make a conclusive finding. But if you have an individual where the expert says, I can only get four, but that four can be read into 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 the suspect or the person that you're looking at. In the purpose of the investigation, you cannot ignore that person because you've got guidance. But it does not mean you are making a conclusive findings of the of, of, of the fingerprints. Same with the DNA. They are, for example, accused number five. It's completely excluded, complete in my recollection of what that report says. 
um, but it says certain things that the examiner find with regard to other accused and that's that's where I, I was at my lot and I think it's the same position with accused number one my lot um, that in my recollection um, the report did not find any even if it's not complete markers any with regard to accused um, one and that my lord it's in support of the investigation because the investigation indicates that accused five was outside he was the driver of the vehicle and i'm saying it's alleged in terms of the investigation and accused one was standing outside so he could have, could have not left anything it doesn't matter how small or big anything because there would have been a contradiction so there is a collaboration in that sense um, but as i said the markers and the issues that the two advocates had the concern about is what i wanted to go into but but it wasn't sitting well with the, uh, the defense yes my lord brigadier the bottom line is that the dma expert that came here excluded all five accused persons because there is a certain minimum and maximum that you must need for you to include persons as donors of a DNA sample. So all five of them were excluded and it's not up to you to interpret that evidence. He spoke, he testified at length going through each and every single marker where there were uh, points of uh, commonality differences but the bottom line remains. He excluded all five accused persons before court. My Lord, that's not how I understand the investigation is done. And, 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 and like I said, this is that's why I left this part. And I think the state advocate also, we, we, we moved away from that part. But now I'm being asked a question about it. That's not how I understand the investigation is being done. If a person, my Lord, I'll make an example, make a statement to say I was robbed by this and this person, um, and, the, and at the end of the day, he gives you the contents where he was, what was taken, um, um, where it was made, black or white or colored, but at the end of the statement, he says, I cannot identify those people. That doesn't mean the crime didn't take place. And that does not mean because he says, I can't identify the perpetrators, you must now leave, forget everything that has been, has, been, has been mentioned about. That's not how you do investigation. There are certain pointers, and if those pointers, no matter how small they are, point to some of the accused, it becomes collaboration evidence. I'm not saying it's a fact because we are not an expert, but it's a point. It's the same, for example, with what is contained in Mr. Ramsipili's um, client's confession. When he says, I was with accused one, three, four, and five, it's what he says, it's not a fact. We needed collaboration evidence to prove indeed that there was such man. So you, it's the it's first part, it must be collaborated for a conclusive finding to be made at the end. And, and this assertion, my lord, does not mean I'm saying the statement links them, that that should not be misunderstood. I'm not saying the expert says they are DNA. And, and this assertion, my lord, does not mean I'm saying the statement links them, that that should not be misunderstood. I'm not saying the expert says their DNA is conclusively found. I was re basically referring to what efforts or steps I took in my investigations, what guided me. And, and like Advocate Munisi correctly said when he stood up on this point, it is not your opinion, Ken, it's the opinion of the DNA expert on this point. My lord, I think we are, we are on the same page and we are saying the same thing. I said, I am making this submission does not mean I'm saying the expert was wrong in saying what he said. I agree with his conclusion. I'm simply saying above, if you look above what is contained there, um, what it says. That's number one. But number two, I do recall, my lord, that that DNA, it's a mixed DNA. The donor of the second DNA was never found, which is a female, to make a conclusive finding. That, that's that's what I seem to recall during my interaction with, 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 with the expert for our interaction. But there is no dispute, and such must not be created, my lord, as if I'm standing here contradicting the expert to say he is wrong. I understand the report that is written there, and I agree with him. But I'm simply saying, on top, he indicates certain markers that were not good enough for him to make a conclusive finding. So it's not in essence, my lord, a complete exclusion. That's what I'm saying. It's where somebody says, I've read this, zero. I've read this, zero. There are certain markers, but unfortunately, they were not enough for the expert to make a conclusive finding, my lord. So, so there's no there's no conflict or different of opinions insofar as what the expert is saying, my lord, and what I'm saying. But basically, I am not contradicting him or disagreeing with him. Okay. And then you also referred to the AVL report for the motor vehicle driven by Long Wetwan. Yes, the tracker. I think it's a tracker. Yes, yes the tracker. The tracker, the tracker system, correct, man. And in that context, how does it say that the relevance to there being intruders or no intruders? Well, my lord, 
we, we know the cell phone, the missing phone, the phone that was in the same tower, including with Longwe, prior to the commission of the incident, that after Longwe with his car and his phone tower, the number that he gave, goes to Phoenix, that phone goes to Muleleki. So if Longwe was the shooter, you would then expect, and if this was um, a, a, a fabricated story of the so-called missing phone, you would have expected, and I said this, my lord, to see one of the people, in particular, because we're talking about Mr. Longwe, going together with the so-called missing cell phone, or the phone remaining behind. So the essence of the AVL was to show, or rather the tracking system, my lord, was to indicate that it was moving together with the cell phone and it went to the clinics. Contrary to the phone that was in the tower that was alleged to have been taken, which went to a different direction. And we could not find evidence as to who was there because the people who were in the house all went to the clinic. So people who in the house are sitting at the clinic with the disease, my lord. The phone is sitting at the last tower of Mondelegi. Then the question is, who is in possession of this phone if there were no intruders? Or at least one person, because the phone cannot work on its own. So that was the essence of that submission, my lord. Okay. Now, let us move closer to these events now. And then we start with, we've made reference already to exhibit BB, that is the identity kit with which you say you confronted accused number two. Do you recall that? I recall that, my lord, yes. I'm going to request that it be beamed so that we all can see what we are referring to. My lord, I'm waiting for my learned colleague to connect to the monitor. <laughs> Sorry, in the meantime, we, call, we keep calling that cell phone a runaway phone. Yes, my lord. It, it's basically the phone that belongs to Miss Kelly Kumar, the 072 number. But does it actually belong to them? Yes, it's a cell phone, my lord. And it, the number was also identified by Kenneth Stain and the, the other gentleman. Yes. Oops. Yes, but she also identifies it on her statements that it's her number oh, and it was, that. yes, no, it is identified. It's identified that it's one of her cell phones that she disclosed to the police to say I have two cell phones, the 072 number, which, which is alleged that was taken by the perpetrators and then she remained with the 082 number. So common sense or logic tells us that uh, there must be forensic evidence before 8 o'clock going this way. Uh, uh, there must be forensic evidence that that phone, the runaway phone, was inside the house. There is forensic there evidence, is. my lord. There is forensic evidence that place it in there together with the other cell phones. Yes, yes. But not only just her cell phones, with the other people who were in the house under the same location. Okay. After the incident, then we have these different directions, my lord. Okay. Uh, here you go. We do have uh, Exhibit BB on the screen. Yes, my lord. Now, if we look at the, the, the depiction of the sketch on the left, uh, I did ask this question before to, I think it, uh, it was Sergeant Lucia. Is that photograph uh, as well depicted with that sketch on the left with the hairstyle of dreadlocks, according to what you can see there? No, it is a woody. Are you referring to yes, the person on the left hand side on my yes. left? No, no, no. The person with the wood is on the right. I mean sorry, with red locks and the person on the left um, um, is wearing a wood in my left. Because I'm looking if you can be given uh, the, the pointer so that I can show you the parts that I'm referring to. Okay. Uh, I'm not Yes. yes, if we point, you yes. see on the, yes, those parts and also on the left hand side. Yes. Do, do you see those parts? Yes, I do. Yes, are those depiction of dreadlock style or is it just the background? My, my lord, I, 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 I think it would be difficult for me to okay. say for the fact. I, I think I don't want to miss it. I do see that there's some blackness showing up there, but I, I can't say. It's more clearer here where you see the dreadlocks. So one can say it looks like it's part of the dreadlocks or the reflection of the picture. I, I don't know because I was not involved in this, my lord. It's, okay. That's a typical time here. 
Okay, I'll, 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 I'll revert back to Exhibit J because this is Exhibit BB. And but, then, sorry, Mr. Ramsey, if you say something, because it just cropped, that just came into my mind, Lord, that in, 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 uh, and, and obvious, maybe let me just, uh, let me notice the line of thought. I'll come back to it later, because I think I might distract where you're going. It's fine. I'll come back to it later, Lord, but I want to say something about this picture. And your testimony is that on the 18th of June 2020 and at Caltonville at Sibani, uh, when you spoke, interrogated, interviewed, accused number two, you then confronted him with his ID kit and you told you that the person depicted on the sketch depicted on the left bears a resemblance to him. Yes, yes, I did say that, my lord. My lord, what I forgot to mention, perhaps let me just deal with it. This is the part I was saying I want to deal with it later. Uh, I didn't mention it in, the, in, in my evidence in chief, is that when I was during the profiling process of the accused, obviously the ID, the age was determined. Now, when, when I made this assertion that I think this person looks like him, what I was also taking into account is that his ID number, in terms of the description given by one of the witnesses, he described the person with the woody, he described obviously the color of the woody, which I will get into, as the person who is about 25 years old. Now, if you look at the age, the age of accused number two, and you count backwards to 2014, it takes you exactly to 25 years. And that was described by one of the witnesses. It's Mr. Makaleni. We dealt with him. Mr. Ramsipeli took me through when he was at the, He made a statement, but also when he was interviewed on the statement of um, Warren Dusa Stenkam. We dealt with it last week. He says this person with the hoodie um, is 25 years old. He also mentions the measurements. Um, I don't recall exactly as to how he says this person, how tall he is, my lord. But he further mentions the issue, the color of the hoodie that was worn by this second intruder. In other words, the person with the, not the second intruder, rather the person he saw outside wearing the hoodie. Because he mentioned more than two, two people. But what is of importance is the age which corresponds with the, with, with, with the accused exactly. We can count even now, backwards, it will take you to 25 years in 2014 when this incident took place. But furthermore, fast tracking now to after the, the 18th of June 2020, my lord, to the time when, 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 when I interviewed Constable Zungu and he subsequently submitted a statement. In his statement, he clearly indicates that at the hostel, and it's contained in his statement, accused two was wearing a black hoodie, which was described at the crime scene on the 24th. He says he was wearing a black hoodie, he changed to a, a different hoodie of a different color. But when they came back or when you saw him, the hoodie was wearing is black in color. It's contained in his statement, my lord. My recollection, my lord, is, is that also, I seem to recall that um, the description in terms of the height given by Mr. McAlene was about 1.8. What I'm not sure of, and I can check during the long adjournment if there is any um, report or, or is containing a statement of Kenel Mangan, because the, the exact measurement of how tall he is, uh, this is now accused to, was established by Kenel Mangan during that exercise of trying. But that I don't recall, my lord. But Mr. McKellen is one, I do recall that he, ex he estimated him to be 1.8. So one will have to see what Kenel Mangan says in collaboration of that. But the woody, um, the age, my lord, fits in. So the essence of my of this submission, my lord, as I said, when I I confronted with, with him with the similarities i forgot to mention that i was also at that time because i knew how old he was that he was fitting in terms of the the, 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 the estimation of the age by the neighbors who saw him who alleged that he saw someone um, wearing the hoodie um, back on the day of the incident my lord yes ma brigadier let me put this so that we, we are not misunderstood yes i read to you the contents of exhibit j as they are I did not take you through the description of Makadeni for the truthfulness or non-truthfulness thereof. I was simply reading the statement because I am aware, as you've already told the court, that Mr. Makadeni is deceased. So there are issues with PSA Evidence Act that must still apply and the state did not apply for that evidence to be there in terms of Section 3. As the court please will not. Uh... <laughs> That's a legal proposition. Once you um, put a statement on record, um, you are saying, my lord, that um, it's not in dispute. Um, you consciously put hearsay evidence on record, 
if you put TSA evidence consciously on record, you cannot later on complain that it cannot be uh, admitted. That's what my learned friend did. Um, we, we therefore submit, my lord, that the proposition that is being put to the witness now that this is hearsay evidence is not correct since um, they themselves put that on record. <laughs> my lord, that aspect is that with because I can tell this court. It's what? I can tell this court that Amanda uh, Stenkamp, who compiled J, uh, uh, exhibit uh, J. It is my intention to call her during no, fine. our yes. defense. No, no. Yes. I think you're talking at cross purposes. He's quoting a legal principle, your, your brother, Andrew. Yes. And concerning putting hearsay evidence. It, 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 it is, I'm, I'm, I'm very well aware that if I solicit hearsay evidence, it's then uh, uh, admissible. Yeah, my right. That's what he's talking about. Yes. So, we're going forward, because remember my follow-up question to Mark, uh, this Makalini after the description given to Ms. Tienkamp. I asked you whether Makalini was one of the persons that were in the house or was it somebody that was just simply passing in the streets? Yes, I do recall that question being asked, my daughter. I was asked to ask you about what you were saying, and what you were saying, and what you were saying. And the reason I was reading that statement was twofold. One was to show the description of the firearm provided by the people in the house, and secondly, to show that the people in the house themselves, to Mrs. Tienkamp, none of the people described the features, the height, the length, anything to Mrs. Tienkamp. That was two, that, those were my, my reasons. So the description of dreadlocks Golden insert, 1.8 meter in height, came from Makaneli, who's not the person that was in the house. That was the purpose I was showing you, I was reading Exhibit J. No, it is correct, my lord, but, but one also must understand it, uh, on what context was Makaleni called in as a witness. If you read his statement, it indicates that he was passing um, the Kumalo's house, that was the scene, and he saw people who were sitting outside, which he took note of. As he was coming back, I think from the shop or from a certain walk, he saw some of these people running to the opposite direction. And then later, when he get closer to the Kumalos, that's when he was informed that these people who were running were involved in the shooting. So that's the context. That's why the investigators focused on him, because he was able to identify the alleged perpetrators outside the house before the incident took in, before they went into the house. That's what. That's how his statement was taken. So it was in that context. So just, just the witness who speaks about um, the garage, is that the same gentleman? Hey, so that person said the garage. Garage, garage. Um, no, remember that. No, no, no. This one speaks to them. He places them who around says, the case. Who says he saw some people at the garage? No. Yeah. Yeah. Gas station is the way Gas station, okay. Hey, but it's that witness. It's the same. It, well, not a witness. It's the same person, my lord. Yes, but. Like the Americans. No, 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 but they refer to electricity uh, mini substation. Ah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading the record, Ben. That's why I can. Yeah, you see the jokes are there. There's evidence about a, a gas station or a garage. Anyway, for this, two people went to a garage or a gas station, etc., etc. You don't remember that evidence? It is here, man. It's not evidence. It is uh, the description by Makaleni. Yeah. Uh, okay, fine. You hear uh, me. Very important. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Makaleni. Well, uh, <coughs> now, Brigadier, you're saying that uh, you confront accused. Sorry. Speak to them. Speak to them. Just ask them if she can, you can just ask them to lower this thing since they say they can't. Yeah, you see, it's centrally operated. Yeah, you want them to switch it off or what? Today, yeah, maybe just last night, even physically myself, I'm suffering because I'm directly under this vent. Okay, this yeah, if you can lower it to... I don't know. Thank you, man. Yeah, okay, fine. 
So, Brigadier, you said on the 18th of June 2020, you then confront accused uh, number two with the ID kits that we have spoken about. And in response, then to say to him, This person bears your resemblance, he says to you, This is a case of mistaken identity. I've got nothing to do with the offense that occurred. Is that the answer that you gave, uh, you got from him? Not verbatim, but the essence of it, you were saying it's not him, my lord. That, that was the essence of, of, of the response. Now, just to clarify the point that I think Advocate Baloy objected on, and that I said to the court that I understand that if I elicit a statement of a witness myself uh, that he, he authored and commissioned, it is acceptable. But the difference I was trying to make at the time was that the description of suspect B, what a uh, warrant officer, Stian uh, says he got that description from. It's from Makale, so I'm not actually reading Makale's statement. I'm reading the description as provided to Warrant Officer Stienkam. So it's a separate issue from the A90 something that was uh, deposed to by Makale. Yes, it is separate, my lord, but you, you, can, you can't deal with Warrant, Warrant Officer Stenkamp's statement in isolation of the people she was interviewing. Yes. Because she yes. tells you, uh, she basically interviewed everyone who was in the house, mm. and she's telling you what they're saying, my lord. Except, of course, that Magalene did not, was not present in the house on the 26th of October 2014. Y yes, he wasn't, my lord, but his statement is very clear even on that interview, that he saw the person he was describing at the gas station, outside at the mini power station. I, I, I and I'm going to go back to Exhibit J, page 5 thereof, and specifically deal with that aspect of the witness, the fifth witness that was interviewed by uh, Ms. Stilkam during the compilation of the identity kit. And I'm going to read again, it says, the fifth witness, Mr. Tima Kalini, residing at Nzamu Section 3942, compiled the face of suspect B. He saw three unknown males in the vicinity of the gas station, busy, busy on the cell phones. He saw them again at Kelly's mom's house. Suspect B stood at the gate. He gave the following description. African male, 25 years, 1.80 meter tall, slender build, medium brown complexion, clothing a black hooded top, witness saw a golden insert in upper teeth, hairstyle is dreadlocks, facial hair, hair is mustache and beard, and then witness saw something in his hand that could have been a firearm. Witness could not describe the rest of the faces. Yes, my lord. Now, this uh, paragraph and description ties in with what I asked you earlier when we were looking at Exhibit BB, uh, the person or the sketch on the left with a hoodie. And I asked you to point at the left and the right side of the face to ask whether that was uh, also the insertion of dreadlocks on that sketch uh, uh, ID, ID kit, remember? I do remember my lord. Now, regarding, and take this fact, Makaneli is the only person that gave the description of suspect B, or the second so-called intruder, right? In, at, at Warrant Officer's Income's ID kit compilation. I'm not speaking about any other statement. I mean, when this ID kit was compiled, Makaneli is the only person that gave the description of suspect B. Um, Manuel, if I can just have a second, I just want to check something, a second or two. I, I can quickly assist you. The first witness is Ms. Kelly Kumar. Uh, if you look at the, what, uh, the last two sentences, she says, Ms. Kilkam, Kelly Kumaro could not describe the second suspect. Do you see that? 
Uh, yes, I, I do. I do see that, my lord. That's exactly what, where where I wanted to go in terms of describing or could not um, give the profile. But as I said, you take this in relation to the statements as well, because in the statements, as much as they are not giving marks in terms of the ID kit that was compiled by Warrant Officers from Sitcom, but they do indicate more or less how the second intruder was. But insofar as the compilation by Warrant Officers Sitcom, yes, were in agreement, they, they didn't say it. But insofar as their statements are, con are concerned, they do give an indication as to how the second suspect was looking like and what he may, may be carrying. On. And, and, and the, the, the end of each sentence, my lord, for by Warrant Officers Sitcom, just to be more precise, for example, yes with um, um, the second person or maybe let's start with Kelly she ends by saying she she could compile the fake okay no let me leave it's not a question the second one my lord by Zandi she says she could not describe the second suspect okay and then this the other one which is Tumelo Mazal Mazala the last sentence he could not compile the second suspect okay. now the third one by mr twala says he could not describe the second suspect and then Makaleni obviously then does my lord um so so that's what is contained but the essence there was a suspect a second suspect but he as she as an expert she was looking for marks that she could get from them in order to compile an identity kit so she's saying they could not that's my understanding of it they could not give her tools or information that will allow it to compile not the non-existence of the second suspect that's why the referral is very clear that they could not give information in so far as the second suspect so there was a second suspect and she wanted to get the features of the second suspect the only person who could do that uh, um, i think accurately for her was mr mccallin yes now the importance of this and i'm going to emphasize for the purposes of compilation of the id kit which is meant to assist the investigation with regard to putting out there in the public an image or a sketch of the potential people that entered into the house on the 26th of October 2014. The people that were in the house could not identify unique features to Ms. Kenkamp so that she can compile also the sketch of the second suspect. Well, according to Mrs. Yes. Uh, Warren Dr. Stenkamp, that's what they say. But as I say, my lord, if you look at the statement disclosed by them, they try to give features of how the second suspect um, Wait. was like. But insofar as Warren Dr. Stenkamp, yes, it is clear that she's saying they didn't give the description marks. But importantly, Magalene has two features that the people in the house never referred to. The first one being a golden insert on the tooth and the dreadlocks has done for the sus second suspect. Yes, I saw that, my lord. And as a passerby, Makaleni manages to see a golden insect from suspect B when he's outside of the house. That's what is contained in the statement, my lord. And then, as a result, you, as the lead I.O., when I say you, I mean as the lead I.O., you follow up on the descriptor that is given by Magalini. Is that correct? No, I followed on the resemblance. That is yes. why my lord has said, when I confronted uh, accused two, I said the, the identity kit that I see, the, in my view, that person looks like him. So it wasn't insofar as following what Mr. McAllen, it was based on my observation. My lord. My lord, the, this, the, the court will also remember that there was a time when we dealt with a dental examination. I'm coming to that brigadier. Let me I wait. Okay. Let right. me leave you, brigadier. Right. No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, you had ample opportunity to be led by my learned colleague, Advocate Banoi. At this stage, it cannot be that the tape is waiting the dog. The dog must wait the tape. So you take my lead. I, 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 no, I don't think that's, that's accurate, my lord. We are here to assist the court. No, no, then, then let me do my cross-examination. If I need you to elaborate on the point, because you go off a tangent, I forget what I was asking you, and you, you, you give so many explanations. Let, me, let us stick to my cross-examination. If you want to elaborate, ask me. Uh, the court has already said. Uh, it's not going to block anyone from explaining to this court. But just ask me because you tend to go off tangent and I'm cross-examining some of the things that me because of your lengthy explanations. 
Man, I'll try to follow what, what Mr. Ramsipil is saying, but, but the court needs to take note that what I was trying to elaborate, elaborate, elaborate to on was said. emanating from the question that was asked to me about the description given by Mr. Makaleni, which Mr. Ramsipil indicated that I followed that to the teeth. So Mr. Makaleni, my lord, one of the things that he mentions there is that the second suspect has um, a gold teeth incision on the upper lip. So my response was, it was not coming from anywhere. There's a description given which says the second person has a gold insertion on the upper part of his teeth. So naturally I was going to the explanation of saying, what did I do to follow this explanation given by Mr. McAllen? That was the question that was put to me, my lord. But I hear you. Um, I'll try to be short where I can. But where I need to explain, my lord, Mr. Ramsey must also bear with me because I'll give answers insofar as the questions that are put to me. Nothing more. And then on the 17th, he was taken to the future and not South African Police Services on the 16th. And on the 17th of June 2020, accused number two is then booked out of from his cell by Sergeant Mohani Mabena. They take him to the bedroom and he strikes me as follows as to what transpired in the bedroom. Uh, he is asked why he cut off his dreadlocks. He is asked about the presence or absence of the golden tooth that he had. He is further asked about tattoos that he had. My lord, I was not there, so I, I, I think it would be difficult for me to, to respond to it. I'm coming exactly to that. Now, I just distract me. The persons that were in that bedroom were the following. It was yourself. It was Sergeant Mabena and Mohani. It was Sergeant Mohola. And there was a gentleman who was wearing uh, braces, the pants braces. And that on that day, over and above the three items that I've said, he was questioned about. He was also uh, uh, made to take his tops off to look whether he's got tattoos. And do you know who says that? He says the person that was doing that interrogation was. It was you. No, but my lord, that's not true. Um, and I think I dealt with this aspect during the trial within trial. That I did not see the uh, that I did not see accused two on the seventeenth. The only time I came across him was on the eighteenth when I interviewed him and subsequently we followed the alibi that says he was at work. There is no way my lord I would have met him on the 16th and don't document my interaction because the purpose of me meeting him was in relation to this matter, nothing more. So if I had met him, even if, to, to, to even throw a, a, a wider blanket, my lord, even if I had an opportunity to meet him on the 16th, the first opportunity when I come across him, I would have asked him about this matter based on the evidence that I have. So there is no way I would have met him on the 17th, ask him about this matter, and don't and then and, and not make a follow-up and don't document it. It's, it's not true. That's why I indicated, my lord, what he told me, honest and openly, in terms of my interaction with him, leading to the confessions. Uh, interesting. Uh, I like that your answer. You said, had you met him on the 16th, the first opportunity that you were going to ask him was to ask him about 63610 of 2014. Why not ask him about 163 10 in a war case? Because that was the case, case for which he was arrested. I'm going to your testimony. That's what I said, but I think uh, maybe Mr. Ramsey Peel, in fairness to him, he may have forgotten um, what I said last year when we started. I said, my lord. When the names of accused one and two were brought to attention, cold case analysis was done. Subsequent to the cold case analysis, cases were identified that are closest, that are seemingly affecting accused one, and cases linking allegations that these cases are linking accused two. Those methods were assigned to Sergeant Mukhani to investigate. The bigger scope of case that I was looking at is this matter, 636. So I assigned unrelated matters to this matter to Sergeant Mohane, insofar as Mr. Ramsey Palestine is concerned. My concern with interaction with accused two was this matter. So that is why I'm saying if I had come across him, be it the 16th, the 17th, any opportunity that I had, it would have been this matter because that's the site. That's my, that was my interest, my lord. The cold case analysis was done based on this matter that is before court, insofar as accused one and two is concerned. And, and my lord, I can just say, I know, I don't mean to take long, Mr. Ramsey, but I think it's important for you to take note. 
This was not a unique thing that was done in accused number two, my lord. When I met accused one, because he's the first person that was arrested for the drug dealing case, uh, when he was brought to me in force arrest, I also didn't question him about the drug related offenses. I jumped straight to this matter because that matter, insofar as the ones that were unrelated, Sergeant Mukula was the eye. I went straight to this to this case that is before court, which was the same thing that I did when I came across accused two. Now, warrant officer, so I should not warrant officer, is a lieutenant colonel man here, I testified here. And when caused by my little colleague, Mr. Mugumizu, on this aspect, your presence uh, when measurements were taken on accused one and on accused two. Warrant officer Mangela, in respect to accused two, at first, and I must be understood before somebody jumps, at first, he said, you were present, then after break, you came back and said, no, you were not present uh, for your second week when the measurements were taken by uh, from accused number two. Hmm. My Lord, I was not present, yes. and I was not here when Colonel Mangena, Lieutenant Colonel Mangena, put it back to the difficulty in assisting. Except to say, I was not present on the second week. And he also put this right to say, whenever I do my work, and he was referring to the taking of measurements from the respective accused persons, he says, whenever I'm doing the, my work, I'm in the presence of the investigating officer, but I'm putting it, that was after he now turned to say, you were not present. My Lord, like I said, that I, it will be difficult really to comment uh, on what Lieutenant Kenny Mangena said. What I can tell the court is that I was not there. And, and like I, without repeating myself, if I was, I would have documented my interactions with accused two, my Lord. Because that was my interest. There was no way I was going to meet him. And, and I questioned him about this matter. And I do nothing. And then I shift it to the following day. It, it doesn't make sense to me for what purpose, my Lord. Because my understanding of what transpired on the 17th, um, nothing is significant really. The rollout that led to the confession started yet even the following of the alibi started really happening on the 18th when I was present. So I was not there. Now we were at exhibit uh, J, the descriptor of the dreadlocks and style and the golden insert on the, on, on the tooth of suspect B. And I asked you whether you followed that path. Yes, yes, I did. That's the yes. part I wanted to go to, yes. my Lord, when you said I'm a same one. And then, accused two on the 22nd of January, I mean, 26, 22nd of June 2020, he was now appearing in the Kabale Magistrate Court for an unrelated matter. And after that, he was taken to Dr. Choco, right? That is correct, my Lord. Yes, I said that's correct, my Lord. And in essence, what was the purpose of taking accused number two to Dr. Kloger for an orthopedist examination? It was precisely what I was trying to get to earlier, my Lord, that second suspect was described as having a gold teeth insertion, and I wanted to uh, check if indeed that is the position or not. But it was because, but it was also because, my Lord, in my observation, on the upper teeth or some of the teeth, My Lord, I beg leave to approach a question. What's wrong? He was raising his hand. Oh, I see. Yeah, I can go to him. Thank you, my Lord, for that. And what was the result of Dr. Chakwe's examination of the question? My recollection, my Lord, they could not find um, that, that he had a gold teeth insertion, which was removed. Because in my observation as well, when I was talking to him, my Lord, I, there's a gap on his teeth. I'm saying it was just like not in the center. So I suspected that perhaps something was there and removed. Um, but the medical report, without quoting it word for word, I do know that the doctor could not find evidence that says he once had an incision or artificial or something that was removed at a later stage. I now want to proceed to the, because we are busy with descriptions and identification by various witnesses of the persons that they saw that night. I want to go to the evidence of Ntabise uh, Mukete. Do you recall who that witness is? I know that, well, I was not in court when she testified, my lord, but I know that she's one of the ladies that was sitting opposite the crime scene uh, with a friend. Uh, I know she is based on the statement she made. Oh, okay. 
and her testimony I'm going to submit up. She testified that she was in a vehicle uh, at outside uh, Maggie Piri's house and opposite, diagonally opposite the Kumalo household. She was with a friend, Yolanda Nota, and she was seated directly behind the driver's seat where Yolanda Nota sat with her infant child. Right? Yes, I'm listening, my lord. Now, as they were sitting and chatting, they heard what sounded like a gunshot. Yes, ma'am. And they are seated there wondering and debating whether it's a gunshot, this one said the other. She sees a tall person running past the car. She does not know where that person was running from. Right? Yes, my lord. Then she heard the second shot and at that stage again, she saw two people running towards the same direction that the first person had run and the direction which she described was the run towards the park, in the direction of the park. Yes, my lord, I'm listening. And now they're saying, we are going to die in this car. We're hearing something that sounds like gunshots and we're sitting here, let's get out. As they are preparing to get out, they hear a third shot and they are now exiting the car after the, sh the third shot. She hears Zanile Kumalo screaming her name and screaming that Ntabi saying, call the ambulance, Senzo has been shot. I'm listening, my lord. And they then, together with Zanile, go inside the Mapiri house and everybody now is frantic. Zandile is sent to Mapiri from the ambulance, they can't phone. But the essence there of is that Zandile leaves without an ambulance or emergency services being called. Yes, I'm listening. Now, we fast forward, and I just want to go to the part where she describes the two, the three gentlemen that she saw passing. And that will be found on the transcripts of the 26th of July, 2023, at page 38. And she described the two men as follows, the one that passed after the second shot. One wasn't big in terms of physique and of average height with dreadlocks. The other was slightly bigger in physique. And then at page 48, line 18, she states, the very one with the bigger physique had a hoodie on his head and with a head as well as he was taller than the two that I, I had already referred to. I'm listening, my lord. Yes, that's the first descriptors of the people that she saw. The first one was tall, the one that ran first. She just described tall dreadlocks running towards the park. My lord, let me pause here and just perhaps address the court. Earlier on in during the trial, and I think Mr. Arthur K. Baloui can back me up on this one, the court had asked for orientation purposes whether the photographs of the park uh, were available. Uh, I've gone my lot and dug onto my disclosure, and indeed I have found uh, the photographs, I think it's a scenic overview of uh, the park, um, Zamo section, the house, the marshes, and that evidence, and I mean, the, and that the album has been compiled by a sergeant double, uh, triple B, Mulumbi, I think. 
So uh, I'm not sure whether uh, we, we, we are going to introduce that evidence and how we're going to introduce it for orientation purposes to see when people said they turn left and ran towards the park and relative to the trees and the streets around, what are we referring to for contextual purposes now? So I'll... I'll, I'll You're asking Mr. Balawi what okay. the colleague wants to know about that evidence. Right. Well, the, the, the photo album is in the other document, the 375, one of 2019. 375? Yes. How did it go to do with that other docket? As, as far as I'm aware. Because there was no mention yes. of this thing. Yes, that's... Um, uh, it's really up to my learned friend how and, and, and how he wants to use the, you know, the, 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 um, the photos. Um, are they but we are in another docket. Yes, in they are in the. They are not part of this docket. No, no, not as far as. Um. Yeah, I didn't even know where they emanated from. Uh, in terms of the, because I only have for the album, it doesn't say which case. Yeah, fine. So this sergeant, where is he? Where does he live? Um. Who took the photos? In other words, it's. Uh, where is he? Of the Springs NCRC. Are you going to call him as a witness? Hello? No, I was just bringing it up because the court had previously. Yeah, I did ask. Them and then the rights never yeah. resolved my Are you going to admit this evidence, uh, Mr. Baloui? Well, um, we, we, for our purpose, my lord, um, we, we never deem it necessary to, you know, to go that route. Um, if my learned friend wants to canvas that, you know, um, it's really up to him. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, the What's the law? What does the law say? Yeah. Because I'm told there are two dockets. Yes. And in these two dockets, seemingly, the, <laughs> the charges a world apart. Yes. These gentlemen are charged with murder, attempted murder, robbery, possession of combustion fire arm, ammunition, etc., etc. That other docket, people are charged with defeating the ends of justice, justice etc. I think you must address me on that. Yes. You don't think so? If you are not prepared, fine. Yeah. But here are people following two different avenues. And the fact is, these gentlemen here are not charged with the contents of the docket Mr. Ramosipili wants to, to introduce into the evidence. Is that not so, sir? That's not so, sir. But I'm not stopping anybody. If you want to go and do some research about this point, you can do so and address me tomorrow. Or if you don't want to do that research, I will decide what to do with the evidence. No. <laughs> no, but the fact of the matter is the, the evidence in that docket were taken from a certain perspective to achieve a certain goal. Um, hence, we, um, we, we didn't even um, thinking, think of using um, you know, those photos. Um, because as we mentioned, they were taken with a certain goal in mind and, and, and to achieve a certain purpose. Okay, yeah. so what do you gentlemen want to do? Well, if my learned friend wants to use them, he must just follow the normal rules of uh, evidence. It's, 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 it's as simple as that. Yes, sir. My Lord, can I just stand in the, the, the photo album that Mr. Ramsipula wants to refer to, my Lord, mm. forms part of the documents that have been disclosed by the state to the defense. That has been? Dis disclosed or furnished by the state to the defense. But this is not what Mr. Malou is saying. So you, you say the state was going to use it in this case, that photo album? Yes, the court please, Malou, because it was defense. Was it discovered, wait, was it discovered in respect of case number 675-10-2014? No, not, not in respect of this case. Um, it's already on record, my lord, that there was a court order that docket 375 for one of 2019 be disclosed to the defense. Yeah. And that was when um, the contents of that docket uh, were then disclosed to the defense. 
And it was in the previous trial? Yes, in the previous trial. Yeah, I thought you guys said we must start the novel. Yes. He says it was in the previous trial, before my brother Maumaki. My lord, uh, uh, whether it, it, yes, it was it was ordered in the previous uh, trial. However, in this trial, my lord, it still forms part of. Was it discovered in this trial? Yes, my lord. Is that so, sir? Well, the fact of the matter is, there was no rediscovery. All the um, statements that were discovered in the first trial were simply used again in the first trial. But the fact of the matter is. When the defense requested um, disclosure of the docket, they were given 63610 of 2014. Then the trial commenced before Judge Mangmela, and an order was then made that the contents of the second docket, 375, 1 of 2019, be discovered to the defense. And that's when the contents of the dockets were then disclosed at that point. So there were two separate discoveries if one can put it that way okay is this gentleman still around mr ramsavid uh, i haven't verified that <laughs> which police station is he attached to uh, i think it's lcrc as well what's lcrc uh, local criminal wait wait let me see wait springs no. springs yes so why don't you phone and find out or you must call him and ask him if he's prepared to come to court. Or I can make an order that he must come, if he's still alive. Because you, are you want to introduce evidence which is not tested. Yes, that's my concern. And there's the stage for saying, Aye. So what do you want to do, sir? Uh, my lord, I see it uh, approaching throughout of May. I resume tomorrow because I was also affected by this uh, court fund coming upstairs. How many? How big is the album? Um, it is less than 30 pages, my lord. Less than 30? Yeah, it's, it's, it's How okay. do you talk, sir? Are they 100? They're not 100. Less than 30? They are less than 20. Okay. Less than 20? Yes. Those photos? Yes. Uh, so, you say you, you'll find out? Yes, we will. Why did you do it together? If yes, I'll, I'll speak to Mr. Uh, to Advocate Valerie, my lord. Uh, yeah. Uh, my lord, excuse me, can I can I just respond to what Mr. Ramsey because the last part yeah. I just said I understood but I never responded to that, you know, the tradition of Ntabi Singh. Um, you know, I was oh, just yes, listening. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay, fine. Fine. Oh, yes. Yes. So we left it hanging. So we can, yeah. So that we can close it nicely. Close that one in the Okay, fine. Me. Yes. My lord, what I can say about the decision given by, um, by Ntabi Singh, it is collaborated in the confession of Mr. Ramsey Pelistine's uh, statement. Accused too, in his own confession, says after the first shot was fired, he ran away. This is what the lady outside is saying that he first saw the second person, the first person running away, a tall person. It is corroborated in that confession of Mr. Um, accused too. He, my lord, I recall that in his confession, he further indicates that as he was running out, accused four, because accused three was in the house, according to the confession, it's alleged, I'm referring to the confession, not to verbatim, that the third accused was still inside the house, then as he was running out, accused four ran in. So in other words, there were now still two, but he ran out. And that will be a collaboration, my lord, that obviously there was the first one that ran away, and then the two will have followed afterwards, my lord. Yes, my lord. And the issue of the dreadlocks, I think it's self-explaining. Mr. Ramsey Pillar did mention that one of the suspects, um, and that person with the suspect was seen on the second grouping. The second, in other words, the two suspects, one of them was having dreadlocks. And according to the confession of accused two is that he left the second suspect, which is alleged to be accused three, with the dreadlocks. And I'm saying alleged, my lord, despite the statement, with the dreadlocks in the house. And that person was seen with the second person running after the first suspect was seen. So there's a collaboration in the moment. Yes, my lord, that's what I wanted to okay. respond to him. Okay. Yes. And this is my parting shot before we take a break. I had earlier on said to you, Brigadier, relax, mm. let me lead you, let the dog work the tail, not the other way around. Because I'm still going, the purpose why I'm standing here, and I'm going structurally like this. I'm going to exhibit HH and JJ, I told you at the beginning. We're going to analyze those confessions, confessional statements, to see whether they are markers of reliability or unreliability based on the totality of evidence. Mm. Yeah, my lord, maybe for, for the sake of smooth running, when I touch base on something, Mr. Ramsey can just indicate that I will I will get there, then we'll understand each other, because I will not know 
when you ask a question whether you still visit that place or you've passed like in this instance we nearly attend without me responding so that is the essence of it so we can find a mechanism to work together so you simply have to indicate because like i said my lord my responses as lengthy as they may seem they are based on the questions that you are putting to me you put a question and i need to answer it in its fullest context to assist the court because we are here to assist the court that is the purpose but if you feel perhaps um, i'm ahead of where you're going um maybe you can just indicate to say we'll get a break and, and i'll give you that space so, so are you going to address me or are you going to just make an agreement between yourselves because i also want to prepare i'm not the type of judge yes. who comes to court blank okay can you just get clarity on which uh, aspect does the court want us to whether the evidence which mr ramsey wants to introduce into this case is admissible uh, unless i know if you say you don't care you don't object it's admissible because it means uh, it's not disputed are you with me y yes my lord uh, mr ramsey has just mentioned that um, we will try and see if we can't reach common ground we'll just maybe uh, give an indication to the court as to whether we did reach common ground or not That's and what? then as whether we there's a need to prepare heads okay fine fine okay thank you my lord are you